Hello, we start, we start now. So here, I, I demonstrate how to motivate people to pray and read the Bible. So we motivate people. How, with different Bible verses, how do we motivate them? How do we um, use Bible verses to motivate them? Okay. Can you see me? When you can see me, please let me know. Okay, we want to motivate people with God's grace so that people have motivation to obey God, so that people want to obey God, so people enjoy obeying God. So that's my our purpose, so that it's not by pressure that people obey, but people obey happily, joyfully. Okay, um, okay, now, Matthew 6, 8. Therefore, do not be like them, for your Father knows the things you have need of before you ask Him. So, um, this verse, God says that, do not be like the um, Gentiles, for your father knows the thing you have need of before you ask them. So we don't have to repeat what we need to tell God what we need. So we can encourage people to pray by saying, God owns everything in the universe. Universe, He has everything in His hand. He knows our needs. And God cares about the sparrows. He will care about us much more. So He cares about the sparrow. He will care about you. Uh, now, why does God care about the sparrow? There's so many sparrows. There's so many other animals all over the world. Why does God care about the sparrows? Because God is love. He cares about animals. He cares about uh, birds. He ca cares about uh, the animals and the land. He cares about the worms. You know. Uh, the worms are important uh, to the world because without the worms, there won't be birds. The birds eat the worms and the trees and the plants, they're all important. And God provides the nutrition for each kind of animal and plants. And so God cares about the whole universe. And He cares about us more than the uni universe because the universe was created for us. Okay, and then we don't have to keep telling God about our needs. He knows our needs already. When we love and obey God, He will give the best to us. So when we encourage people to pray, we say, God knows your need. When you love Him and obey Him and seek the kingdom of God and His righteousness and all these things were given to you. So we spend time enjoying God. Delight yourself in the Lord and He will give you the things you, uh, your heart desire for. Zephaniah 3.17 He will take great delight in you. He will quiet you with His love. He will rejoice over you with singing. So here it says that God is a joyful God and He's the source of joy. And when we build up a relationship with God, He will be very happy with us and will give us the best. Now this is very important. So this verse tells us that God is happy to be with us. He is he is rejoicing over us with singing, especially when we have a good relationship with Him. When we love Him all the time, when we praise Him and worship Him, He is happy with us and then He will bless us. So when we pray, don't think of just asking. Think of building the relationship. Now one time in a mission field, I was you know, uh, praying for someone, but the way I pray was like this. I say, thank God, hallelujah, you're so wonderful. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, Jesus loves me. So I pray and sing and enjoy God. God, you're so wonderful, hallelujah. And this person starts to have manifestation of evil spirit. And then the person next to me said, 
are you driving out demons? I said, I guess I am. You can see the demons coming out. He said, how come you did not say in Jesus' name, cast out the demons? I said, when we pray and Jesus comes, He will do anything He wants to do. We don't have to every time say, cast out the demons in Jesus' name. I can say that. I can do that. But there are many times when I was just praising God and loving God and demons start to manifest and then uh, we drive out the demons for the, for the person. Actually, when we love God and enjoy God, God's presence will become stronger because God is happy that we have a good relationship with Him. Some people think that to drive out demons, they have to cry out very loudly and yell uh, in order that the, the demons will listen to us. No, it's not by our power, not by, by our voice. It's Jesus' presence. So when we love God, God is very happy with us. He rejoices over us with singing and then the demons will run away. Okay, so when we drive out demons, sometimes we can say, in Jesus' name, I cast out the demons. Uh, we, but we don't have to say that all the time. Sometimes we can just praise God and love God. So I encourage you to pray like this, to pray, to declare the love of God. God, you're so wonderful. I love you. I enjoy you. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Wholeheartedly delight in God. God, I'm happy that I have you. You're so wonderful. You're a wonderful God. So learn to pray like that, to delight in God. And God enjoys the relationship with us. And when we uh, build up a good relationship with God, God will rejoice over us with singing. So in our prayer, it's more important to trust in His love and to love Him. So it's more important to say, yes, I know God, you are loving me now. That is faith. Some people say, how, how do you know God is loving you? The Bible says so. The Bible says that we love because He first loved us. He loved us first. He loved us all the time. He cannot stop thinking about us. He is rejoicing over us. So I know that for sure He loves His children. So I say, Lord, I know that You love me. And when I pray to You, You are very happy. You come to me. I, when I abide in You, You abide in me. And You cause me to bear much fruit. So I know for sure this because God promised that. So this is the attitude of prayer. It's more important to trust in God in our prayer instead of just asking. Now I have been to some places and they pray for revival. This is how they pray. They will be crying. Oh God, bring a revival. Oh, we need revival. Oh, we need revival. And I told them, God always wants revival. God always wants His children to love Him more. And when they love Him more, His power will come and bring a revival. When people dedicate their life to God, God is very happy. So when we pray, we can say this, when we pray for revival. Lord, I know that You want a revival. Lord, please first revive my life so that I love You. I desire You. I want to obey You. I want to glorify You. I want to do things to tell people about Jesus, to show Your goodness. Lord, I want to show Your goodness. Oh Lord, change my life so that I'll glorify You. Then my life is revived. Lord, use us. Help us to submit to You. Use us so that we can glorify You and bring about a revival. So when we pray for revival, we don't just say, Oh, come, 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 fire, come, fire, 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 fire. Some people just say, fire, fire, fire. Uh, why not say, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Please don't set our eyes just on power. Some people pray like this, power, power, power. They just look for power. They're not looking for Jesus. Instead, I'll say, Jesus, Lord, I love you. I like you. I enjoy you. You are the source of strength the source of revival, the source of goodness. So when we pray, we trust in God, we enjoy God, and God will do more things. Actually, revival can come any time when we have a good relationship with Him. When we build up a good relationship with Him and then pray for more people, you see more miracles. 
revival will happen in your place when we love God more, obey Him more, serve Him more, glorify God all the time, enjoy God all the time, and then the revival will come. Instead of just asking, asking for revival. We believe that God wants a revival. God wants. God wants to bring revival to people. God wants to change people's heart. So in our prayers, it's more important to trust in Him, in His love, and to love Him. Motivate people to pray. Seek first the kingdom of God and His righteousness, and all these things shall be added to you. So God loves us and wants to give us the best. He, he wants to give us the best. To seek God's kingdom means two things. We help more people to be born again. We want people to enter the kingdom of heaven. So we pray for the salvation and we uh, tell people about Jesus. The first part. The second part, let Him rule over us. Where God rules, there is His kingdom. So let God's kingdom come. Lord Jesus, I want you to be my king. I want you to take over my life. Come Lord Jesus, take over my life. Be my Lord, my master that is seeking his kingdom. That we want people saved. At the same time, we want Jesus to be our Lord. And then all this and his righteousness. To seek his righteousness means to obey him. At first, it means to receive the righteousness of Jesus Christ that cover us with his righteousness. And then second, that we live out the righteousness of God, that we obey God. When we seek His kingdom and His righteousness, He will give us all the things necessary to enter His will. So, when we seek His kingdom and His righteousness, we don't have to worry about anything. He will give all those things to us. And many people have problems because they don't seek God's kingdom and righteousness. Because many people just live for themselves. They're selfish, they, they worry, they don't pray to God much. They don't enjoy God. They don't believe in God's goodness. So I encourage you all when you pray to always say, God, I know that you're happy with me. I know that you're happy when I come to you. I know that when I pray to you, you're always very happy and you respond to me. Lord Jesus, thank you. I enjoy you. I enjoy you. I like you. Oh, Jesus. Lord, I worship you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So when we pray, we pray for God's kingdom to come. We want more people saved and we want people to be our Lord. First Corinthians 2 9. Eyes have not eye has not seen nor ear heard nor have entered into the heart of man the things which God has prepared for those who love Him. So when we love God, God has prepared for us many, many wonderful things. So God treasures those who love Him. When we love Him, God treasures us. When we sincerely love God, He will prepare for us things we cannot imagine with, uh, with His creativity. That God, when we love Him, He'll prepare for things that we cannot imagine. And with His creativity, He'll create wonderful things. So the nature of God here is His creativity and His willingness to give. He has many good things He wants to give to people. And another quality nature of God is He is generous. He wants to prepare the best for us. He wants to give us the best. So in our prayer, it's more important to love God than to ask for blessings. When we love God, He will prepare for us things beyond our imagination. This gives us motivation to spend more time loving Him in our prayer. So that will give us motivation and say, Lord, I want to love You. I want to trust in You. I enjoy You. Oh, I delight in You. You're so wonderful, so good. And we want to worship You. We want to love You and obey You. I want to do the things that, the, that, you, that you are happy about. I want to uh, cause you to be happy. I want to do things that make you happy. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. So when we have the heart to love God, to love God means first to desire God, to appreciate God. Desire Him, appreciate Him, and to want to be in His presence, and to obey Him, and to glorify Him, and to, and to love the people that He loves. That he loves his children, that we want to love his children. 
Okay, and a verse to motivate people to pray, John 6, 44. No one can come to me unless the Father who sent me draws him. So it's the Heavenly Father that draws us to come to Jesus. The, whole, the Father will draw us to come to Jesus. So God wants us to come close to Him. God draws people to come to God. God is a God of relationship. He wants us to come close to Him. It is God who takes the initiative to attract, to attract us to Him. So we, we don't have to worry that God does not accept us. So it is God who wants to accept us. It's God who attracts us to Him. So we don't have to worry and say, Oh, God doesn't want me. God doesn't like me. God doesn't accept me. We don't have to say those things because God really desires us. Now, many people say, I don't have a good relationship with God. And I tell them, you just say to God, God, I need you, I need you, I need you. I know that you want me to come to you. I know that when I need you, you'll come to me. Just have the faith. Faith is believing in what Jesus promises, what God has promised. God has promised this thing. We just trust that. And then God will give to us. And He has He's drawing us to Him. Even when we sin and are lazy to pray, He still tries to attract us back to Him. So He tries to attract us. Many times, many Christians say they have sinned, but the Holy Spirit keeps moving in the heart to draw them to Jesus. Of course, it's best that we repent willingly and stop the sin immediately when the sins are in our mind. We want to stop the sins and immediately we obey Him. Then God is very happy with us. When God is delighted with someone, He will bless this person more. But even when this person sins, God still continues working in his life. But it's best that we already say no to sin and then God is happy with us and then he will continue to bless us. So God will bless those who respond to him more, who take care of their sin and love God more. God will be happy with them. So we can be confident that it's not hard to come close to God and it's not hard for God to bless us. It's not hard to come to God. Anytime we say, Lord, I need you, He'll come right away. Anytime, all, you know, actually all the time we can say, God, you're here. God, you're here. You're right here blessing me. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I love you. Anytime we do that, God is with us all the time. So then we have confidence. We have confidence that God is always with us. Okay, here, James 4, the 8. Draw near to God, and He will draw near to you. So here is uh, the picture is, is very small. It's a, a big hand and a small hand holding onto the big hand. So it's uh, when we come to God, God is very happy, and He will bless us. God treasures our relationship with Him. John 6, 44, the last verse we read, tells us that God tries to attract us to Him. When we respond and come close to Him, He will come close to us. So when anytime we come close to Him, He will come close to us. Where God is, He will bring blessings and raise us to a high level. So when God comes to us, He will help us to go higher and higher. He will give us spiritual gifts. He will give us talents. He will give us ability to, that we can bless more people. He will strengthen our spiritual life. He will raise us up to a high level. So whenever we come to God, God will bless us. God will come to us and bless us. When we think of praying, we should think of building up a loving relationship with God, and this will help us to enter God's plan. So when we pray, don't just think of asking for things. Think of as building up the relationship. I like you, Lord. I like you. I enjoy you. I like to be with you, and I know that you're with me now. I enjoy that. I enjoy you, Lord. You're so wonderful. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I love you, Lord. I love you, Lord. So it's building up the relationship, and God is happy with us. You know, I want to share with you, anytime I pray, the joy of the Lord will come to me. This happened after I was filled with the Holy Spirit. The day when Carlos and Acondia laid hand on me, he came from Argentina in South America. He laid hand on me, immediately I felt power like electricity enter me. I felt a great love enter me. It touched me so powerfully, I cried for a long, long time. 
I said, wow, I didn't know I can experience God's love like that. I didn't know God's love is so powerful, so strong. So that attracts me to pray to God, to spend a long time praying to God all the time. And then one day, there was a meeting and I ex experienced the joy of the Lord. And I, I kept praying, I want to keep that joy. And then from then on, any, from then on, anytime I think of Jesus, hallelujah, the joy will come to me, anytime. So I say, wow, God, you're so wonderful. You're full of joy. And then the more I enjoy Him, the more the joy will stay in me. The more I say, God, you're so wonderful, hallelujah. And the joy will keep flowing. So I hope that you all see that praying to God is not just asking, but building a relationship with God and trusting God loves us, trusting God wants to have a close relationship with us when we uh, love the things that God loves when we love the people as God loves the people God will be very happy with us God will bless us okay John fifteen seven. if you abide in me and my words abide in you you will ask what you desire and it shall be done for you so when we abide in Jesus and his word abide in us so we have Jesus, we pray, and the relationship with God, uh, build up the relationship with God, and then also remember the Word of God. Recite the Word of God, memorize it. Read it and memorize it. And the Word of God stay in us. So we remember the Word of God, and you ask what you desire, and it shall be done for you. So this gives us a promise that when we have a close relationship with God, and then also the Word of God stays in our heart. We don't just memorize it, but we obey the Word of God. We trust the Word of God. We trust the promise in the Word of God, God that God says that He will bless me. He will bless those who love Him. I will continue to love Him. I trust in this. I, when the Bible says that when I abide in Him, He will abide in me and I will bear much fruit, then I remember this and I trust in that. That is trusting His Word building our faith on His Word. Then, whatever we ask, it will be done for us. Actually, God has done so many wonderful things in my life. I thank God for that. I give glory to God. I say, God, you're so wonderful. There's so many blessings. So I hope you all will learn to build up the relationship with God and trust in God's Word and follow God's Word and glorify God and then God's blessing will come to you. God treasures our relationship with Him. God wants us to have a relationship with Him and He likes it. When we have a close relationship with God and let His Word stay in us and guide us, God will answer our prayer. So if we have a close relationship with Him and let His Word stay in us to guide us, then He will answer our prayers. So when a person follows God's Word, his prayers are not just about his needs, but about relationship with God and His kingdom. Then we don't just pray for money, money, more money. We pray for God's kingdom and uh, God's work. I want more people saved. I want a country to be revived. I want a church to be revived. I want a pastor and a lay Christians to, to be revived so that they all love God more and more. So we know that when we love God and have God's Word guiding us, then God will give us all the things we need. Okay, and then we, Psalm 37, 4, Delight yourself also in the Lord, and He shall give you the desires of your heart. So, when we delight ourselves in the Lord, that means be happy because of God. Be happy because of the body He has created for us. Because of His work of the Holy Spirit inside us to change us. Because of the salvation of Jesus. Because of nature. Because how He has provided for us. How He has blessed us in every way. So we delight ourselves in God. We think of God. We say, God is just so wonderful. When we praise You and worship You, I experience joy. You are so wonderful, so good. Then we are delighting ourselves in God. That we are happy because of God. And then He will give us the desires of our heart. He will give us all the things that we desire. First, God is full of goodness. Thinking about His goodness will give us joy. All the work of God is good. All His work is good. And so when we, when we look at all the good things of God, then we'll be happy. 
And when we are happy because of the good things of God, God is God will bless us. So we should be happy about the things of God instead of some people just think of happy about money, happy about the things they they get, uh, physical things. But we should think thank God for everything we have. We say it comes from God. When we have money, we say thank God that you provide for me. Thank God you have given me the, what we need. And, and then we thank God and we trace it all to God. Not just looking at the money, but trace it to God. And praying include, includes appreciating God and delighting in God because of His goodness. So appreciate God and delight in Him because of His goodness. When we delight ourselves in God, He will give us what our hearts desire. So what we desire, He will give to us. He, he knows what we desire. He will give to us automatically. God has given me many things that I did not ask for. He will just give to us because things that we cannot imagine. And we should count every blessing to build up our delight in God. So we count all the blessings of God. You have done so many good things. I, I thank you. I worship you. I adore you. I, I like you so much. And then the more we count the blessings, the more we receive the blessings from God. And Psalm 58, 14. Then you shall delight yourself in the Lord, and I will cause you to ride on the heights of the earth and feed you with the heritage of Jacob your father. So here also it says that when we delight ourselves in the Lord, then He'll cause us to ride on the heights of the earth. He's, he'll cause us to go higher and higher. We become a greater person. And He'll feed us with the heritage of Jacob. First, God is full of goodness of every kind. He is full of goodness. When we delight ourselves in God, He will cause us to ride on the heights of the earth and give us the heritage of Jacob. That means He will lift our lives to a high level and bless us. So when we count all the goodness of God, we are happy because of God and then God will cause us to go to a high level. Praising God and rejoicing in Him are the best thing that we can do. So when we praise God and rejoice in God, those are the best things uh, that we can do. It will cause blessings God, uh, to come to us. God will bring bless blessings to us when we praise God and delight in God and rejoice in God. And motivate people to wait on God. To Now wait on God can mean we just have simple thoughts about delighting in God. God, you're so wonderful. God, you're so good. Very simple prayer. And wait for the Lord to speak to us. Or we just listen to praise worship songs. We just hear the songs and then we just think of God. And then God can give us thoughts. God can bring thoughts in our mind. John 10, 27. My sheep hear my voice and I know them, and they follow me. So Jesus' sheep, Jesus' sheep will hear His voice. So Jesus does speak to us in different ways. He speaks to us. All Christians can hear God's voice. Now these are the ways that we hear God's voice. He moves us to repent. That is God's voice. He, uh, he moves our heart so that we repent and follow His word. When we read the Bible or listen to sermons, he will move in us to obey His Word. He guides us to make decisions. Uh, when we have to make decisions, we ask God for guidance. And then He will guide us how to make decisions. He stops us from making mistakes. When we are about to sin, God will stop us. So these are the words of how God speaks to us. He tells us the needs of some people. He will tell us this person needs something. And then we will... Uh, it will motivate us to go and help the person. So God can speak to us in different ways to help us to repent, to respond to His Word, to guide us to make decisions, to stop us from sinning or making decisions or making mistakes and tell us the need of some people. And three, the more we pray to Him and wait on Him, the more we can hear His voice. And His voice will guide us to His wonderful plan. 
So the more we pray to him and wait on him and be quiet, in a sense that we don't worry about things, that our mind is relaxed and peaceful and just think about God all the time. And sometimes even when we're not waiting on the Lord, when we're walking on the street, when we are taking a shower, when we just wake up or about to go to sleep, God can speak to us. Now for me, God has given me many thoughts of teaching, many thoughts, many ideas of how to overcome sin, how to live out God's wonderful plan, how to live out His, uh, to be motivated by His grace. All this came uh, when He spoke to me. So we can all um, enjoy God. And that is the best prayer, to enjoy God, delight in God. Okay, now we also have warnings to people warning to people we can have warning that is the law the warning now the law has the part of telling us what to do and also the warning part two parts telling us telling us what to do and also the warning and punishment james 4 2 you lust and do not have you murder and covet and cannot obtain obtain you fight and war, yet you do not have, because you do not ask. You ask and do not receive, because you ask with wrong motives, that you may spend it for your, on, your, on your pleasures. So these verses say, you lust and you do not have. You murder and covet and cannot obtain, because you fight and war, yet you do not have, because you do not ask. So because they don't pray, and you ask and do not receive because you ask with wrong motives that you may spend it on your pleasures. So when people ask with wrong motives, God is not happy. Some people just say, I want a wife, I want a beautiful wife to just want for themselves. But on the contrary, if they just love God and worship God, God will prepare for them the right spouse. So God wants to bless all real Christians. And many Christians have many problems in their lives because they don't pray and because they pray with wrong motives and then they don't get it. So when people don't pray and they do pray with the wrong motives, then they don't receive it. So this verse tells us there's a warning. And also Jesus said that he who doesn't abide in me and then I won't abide in him and then he will be like a branch that's thrown to the outside and dry up and thrown to the fire. So when people don't have a good relationship with God, there is a warning that he can be thrown to the fire. That's a warning. For every commandment, there's always uh, grace and promises, but also there's always uh, warning and punishment when people disobey. Now, sometimes the grace, the promises are not right there, but it's in the whole Bible. In the whole Bible, how we, when we obey God, what, uh, what God will do, how He will bless us. That is in the whole Bible. So sometimes in some verses, it just tells us what to do. It didn't say the grace, but if we look through the Bible, we can find places that talk about how we can uh, receive the blessings, how when we obey, He will bless us. 